Testing, test. All right. Good morning. Happy Sabbath, everybody. I was given the opportunity to uh, give the message today. Um, we're going to have fun. It's going to be interactive. We're going to learn. And uh, let's, uh, let's let God do this sermon, yeah? Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, let us, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, uh, thank you that I'm up here today. Thank you that I get to uh, deliver the message. I just ask you please be with each and every person in the audience. Um, please help my uh, message to be delivered to everyone and uh, to convey the message and help it to reach as many people as possible and uh, help us to learn and leave and apply a lesson to our lives. And in Jesus Christ, name we pray. Amen. And thank you to those who are tuning in online. <laughs> so, let God steer your fear. Interesting title, huh? What do you think when you first hear the word fear? Do you think it's something good or do you think it's just all bad? Can it be used for good? I don't know. Let's find out. Let's find out. So let's take a look at the definition of fear from our greatest friend in today's day and age, Google. <laughs> An unpleasant emotion caused by the belief that someone or something is dangerous, likely to cause pain, or something that is a threat. So fear, we go through it every day in our day-to-day -day lives, whether it's uh, getting an A on that school test, don't know if you're going to pay rent. I don't pay rent yet, so I don't know. <laughs> we go through it all the time. A moment when I was the most afraid of my life. Catalina, eighth grade trip that we took with Miss Herman and David Tripp. Shout out to our old L&J teachers. <laughs> so does anyone, do any of you remember a class trip that you took when you were about the ages 15, 15, 14? Raise your hand if you remember a class trip. All right, yeah, stuff like that, DC, all the stuff you had to take, right? Yeah. So we got our ocean people, and we got our land people. I'm a land person. <laughs> all right? <laughs> I was a land person, still am a land person. I want our land people to stand up. Stand up, land people. Come on. There's got to be something. Y'all, okay, California. All right, we got a land person. We got a land person. Thank you. I feel you. Water people, you stay. I'm not going to ask you to stand up. We know. We get it. <laughs> well, I remember going on this biology trip, right, with David Tripp, Miss Herman. They said, we're going to Catalina Island. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to be great. It's going to be fun. Wrong. To me, I was like, we're, go uh, we're going to a place of ocean, the water? Excuse me? Okay. Uh, well, it's called an island for a reason. I'll be on the land. <laughs> I was afraid of the ocean. I was afraid of the water, the underwater world. It scared me. Simply a land person. Anyone remember the, the shark movie Jaws? Raise your hand. <laughs> Jaws? Yeah. Everybody remember that. Movie, right? It's about a shark. It's chomping on people. Marine biologists, they got to figure out how to stop the shark. Are we going to stop it a nice way? Are we going to... We can, we can kill it? I don't know. We, they got to figure out how to stop the shark, right? They're going through all these scenarios, and they have to overcome fear. There's a story about a guy in the Bible who has to overcome events and is put through scenarios by God, and he has to overcome his fear as well. So follow me, and we shall see how this story relates to me. Oh, you like that rhyme? No, you'll catch that. <laughs> Gideon and the Midianites. How many of you know that story? All right. See, when I heard it, I, I, I was searching up, all right, so what should, I, what should I speak about? I'm on the computer. I'm all, oh, fear, that's a good one. All right, Gideon and the Midianites. Don't really, didn't know the story that much. All I remember is VeggieTales. Who watched VeggieTales when they were little? <laughs> VeggieTales, all right. I remember the flashlights, that whole scene. That was cool. And I was like, all right, well, I guess I got to get into the Bible. I got to read the actual story. So our story starts off in Judges 6.1, if we can get that on the screen. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of Midian for seven years. So as we can see, Israelites, they're not doing good. 
They're doing the opposite of good. And what's the opposite of good? Bad? Nice. If you answer something different, we, we got to have a talk outside. Like. <laughs> Israelites forced to flee into the mountains. They're crying out to the Lord, help us, help us. I don't know what's going on. So the Israelites are sent a prophet. The prophet told them what they've been doing wrong. Judges 6, 7 through 10. And it came to pass when the children of Israel cried out to the Lord because of the Midianites, the Lord sent a prophet to the children of Israel and said to them, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, I brought you up from Egypt and brought you out of the house of bondage. And I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of all those who oppressed you. And I drove them out before you and gave their land into your hand. Also I said to you, I am the Lord your God. Fear not the gods of the Amorites in those lands which you dwell. But you have not obeyed my voice. So Israelites, they're showing that they're not just afraid of their oppressors in the land that they live in. They're afraid of their oppressors' gods as well. And that's a no-no. There's only one God, only one true God. So an angel, God sends an angel, right? Angel comes out of the sky. I'm the angel. This is the oak tree, Gideon's oak tree. Angel oh, sits down right here. He's got angel swagger. It's all, what's up? What's up, Gideon? What's good? And Gideon's like, whoa. Is that an angel? Y'all see that? That's an angel. And let's keep in mind, Gideon's not showing fear. Not yet. Not at least, not yet. We don't know. Gideon asks why all this happened to the Israelites. Gideon, he starts trying to roast God. He started, he's trying to, trying to roast God right here. Judges 6.13. Gideon says to him, O oh Lord, if the Lord is with us, then why has all this happened to us? And we're all of his miracles, which the Father told us about, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hand of the Midianites. So Gideon, he's having an attitude. God's like, oh, oh really? Okay. So we're going to take a look at the definition of doubt, because I think I'm smelling doubt from Gideon right here. Definition of doubt, a feeling of uncertainty or lack of conviction. So I don't know how many of you know, but um, I'm a skateboarder. A couple of my friends are also skateboarders, actually all of them. <laughs> and right, so I'll be at the skate park, or I'll be out in the streets, and I'll be pulling up to the stair set like this. Like this, like this stage. And I get up to it, and I'm like, I don't know if I want to throw my trick down this. I'm doubting my skills. I haven't been put through a scenario or test like this before. A little foreshadowing to what's going to happen. So let's take a look at Judges 6, 17. Then he said to him, if now I've found favor in your sight... Then show me a sign. Show me that it's you that's talking to me. That's what Gideon's saying. He's saying, okay, you want, me to be your, you want me to be your commander? All right, give me a sign. So God sends him an angel, right, to show him his great power. He says, I want you to get me some food. I want you to get me an offering. Put on this rock. And Gideon's like, okay, whatever you say. He puts the food on the rock, and he's like, all right, what are you going to do with it? And God's like, bam, and fire comes out of the rock. Food's gone. Gideon's like, oh. He God, he God, ain't he? All right. So our first mentioning of fear, huh? Judges 6, 22 through 23. Now Gideon perceived that he was the angel of the Lord. And he was like, alas, O Lord God, for I have seen the angel face to face. So Gideon's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I just saw an angel. I'm not dead. I don't know what's going on. And verse 23 says, the Lord said to him, peace be with you. Do not fear you shall not die. All right, so Gideon is getting used to God. He's getting used to what, how, seeing how powerful he is. He's like, okay, what do you want me to do? So shortly after, the Lord told Gideon to destroy the altar of Baal. Is that how you say it? Baal? Yeah, it was kind of weird. Baal. They, the Israelites, they're worshiping other gods that aren't Jesus, aren't God, isn't Christ. And Gideon obeys, right? 
grabs his 10 men, grabs his posse. He's like, all right, guys, we got to do this. we got to do what God says. So they go, and they destroy. It doesn't say if it's a statue or something. They just go destroy it. And his father comes out, and he's like, whoa, whoa, what you doing? That's about all. That's my guy about all right there. You just destroyed him? Okay. If he's, the, if he, if he's Baal, let him raise himself up. Baal's an inanimate object. Couldn't do it. Couldn't save himself. So the Israelites realize, oh, okay. So he's not God. He's not the true God. So now God, is, he's getting into the car. He's going to start, he's going to start steering fear. First fear test, Judges 7.3. Now therefore proclaim in the hearing of the people, saying, Whoever is fearful and afraid, let him turn and depart at once from Mount Gilead. And 22,000 of the people return, and 10,000 remain. So here's the scenario. Here's what's going on here. Gideon, right? He's got all these soldiers. Not soldiers yet. He's got these people that are wanting to be in God's army to defeat the Midianites. He brings them, and he says, All right, whoever's afraid, you can go home. And more than half of them were like, all right, peace out. See you. They left. <laughs> and Gideon was like, oh, really? We only got, what, 10,000 people left? It's not looking good. I think God's using this as a tactic, right, to help Gideon get all the people who are fearful by default away. Because there's people that are afraid by default. They're skittish. You ever meet a skittish person scared of a fly? Real annoying. So God gets rid of them. And then there's our brave people. Gideon, he's a brave person, but sometimes he's afraid. So that's what God's doing here. So now we're getting into our second fear test, Judges 7-4. But the Lord said to Gideon, there's still too many men. Take them down to the water, and I will thin them out for you there. If I say this one shall go, he shall go. And if I say this one shall not go, you shall not go. So the Lord is trying to show Gideon, right, that it doesn't matter how much people you have compared to the Midianite army. You shouldn't be afraid of the number of soldiers you have because God's power is greater than any other multitude or group of people, right? Amen? Amen. Amen. Judges 7, 5 through 6. So Gideon took the men down to the water. There the Lord told him, separate those who lap the water with their tongues as a dog. So... This is kind of embarrassing, but you know how a dog drinks water? Use their tongue, ah, 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 drink it. All right. There's those men who do that. Oh. Oh, okay. So the men that lap their tongues with the water, right? And then there's ones that kneel down to drink. They kneel down. Soldiers plunge their whole head into the water, and they start drinking the water. Weird. <laughs> So I didn't know whether, why God said the ones that knelt down like, and plunged their heads into the water is bad. So I kind of did some research. I went to a, uh, a third-party website, right? And it says, that, it says that the ones that, you know, knelt down, they were kind of showing inconsiderate soldiers of a military situation, right? Because you don't know what's going on. You're plunging your head into the water. And, you know, your soldier, that's kind of, that's not something that a soldier would do. The other ones, they did it peaceful. Peaceful, like a dog. Went like this, and drank the water. So that's what was going on there. So now we're into our next test. God says, on the same night, Judges 7, 9 through 11, my bad, sorry. It happened on the same night that the Lord said to him, Arise and go down into the camp, for I have already delivered Gideon into your hand. But if you are afraid, go down to the camp with Pura, your servant, and you shall hear what they have to say. And afterwards, your hands will be strengthened to go down against the camp. So I think this is a wholesome, wholesome moment. God's like, okay, if you're afraid, Gideon, take your buddy. Hey, guys, guys, everybody, pay attention. So... How many of you are married? Raise your hand. Okay. 
How many of you, <laughs> this one's embarrassing, how many of you like a girl at school? <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. You don't have to raise your hand. <laughs> so, right, you like a girl, right? And you're like, oh, man, you got your wingman with you, right? And he's behind your back, and he's like, all right, bro, you got this. All you got to do is you just got to go talk to her. And then he's hyping you up, and you got it. And you take her on a Christian date, you hear me? Christian, Christian date. That's what's going on here. Gideon's like, he takes his buddy down to the camp. They hear the, they hear the soldiers talking about a dream, a weird dream, a chieftain and a servant. The dream was about a loaf of bread rolling into the camp. A loaf of bread? When I read that, I was like, huh? Loaf of bread rolling down into the camp, and it collapsed and it hit a tent. And then the tent collapsed. Servant was like, oh, no, no, that's not just a dream. That's surely the hand of Gideon and the Lord delivering our camp into theirs. So Gideon and his servant, right? They return to camp after sneaking around, hearing that. Gideon gives an assured victory speech about how the Lord has already delivered his hand into the Midianites, and the Midianites into their hands. So now we're reaching the final battle, right? I got some stuff I want to show. So we got a pot. We got a pot right here. This is important. This is our first thing. We got a pot. Second, we got a torch. They say everyone knows what this is. <laughs> they say the torch is what you use for uh, barbecuing. Careful with this, we're in the church. <laughs> and then last, we got our shofar. I didn't. How many of you know what a shofar is? Shofar, right? It's a real, it's a real ram's horn, a horn of an animal, right? And you blow into it. Really popular in the Middle Eastern countries, you know. Um, this, I actually, we ordered this off of Amazon. <laughs> so I only had one day to practice blowing it. So I might not be able to get it today, but when we come, when, it, when I need to blow it, pray to the Lord that it works. All right. So. Final battle, Judges 7, 16. Then he divided the 300 men into three companies, and he put a trumpet into every man's hand, right? With empty pitchers and empty torches inside the pitchers. So he brings them all into a huddle. He's like, all right, guys. He says, I want everyone to watch me. Do what I do. When I blow this trumpet, you all will blow yours too. And when I say, the sword of the Lord and of Gideon, I want you to yell that too, all right? Everybody's hyped up during the whole. They're like, yeah, 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 let's do it. So alas, here we go. Gideon and his hundred men came to the outposts. All right, I'm going to try and blow this trumpet, y'all. <laughs> this might sound not good. I might not get it. We'll give it three tries. All right, y'all with me? <laughs> all right, let's see Let's see if all the practicing. Let's see if it. All right, that's goal one. <laughs> all right, let's give it. Let's give one. Let's give it two more. Okay, that's two. That's two. <laughs> we we almost there. All right, let's get one more. If we don't get it, that's okay. All right, we done. <laughs> we done. All right. <laughs> so they blow the trumpets, right? They break the pitchers. All right. So I don't want y'all to cast me out for this. All right. I asked Pastor Joseph. He said, you can do it. You can break it on the stage. I, saw, I see some of y'all faces, y'all. Is he dumb? He really going to do that? I'm going to do it. We're going to clean it up. We're going to clean it up. Don't worry. They break. They break the pitcher. Pictures, everybody's screaming, everybody's screaming. And then Gideon says, y'all ready? The sword of the Lord and of Gideon! And that's what's going on. The war, Midianites, they're in the middle. They're, they're waking up. They're like, whoa, 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 bro, they're, they're already here. We, we weren't ready. And they're scared. They only got one way to go. Imagine Midianites in the middle. They run straight out. And there it is. That's the end. 
I, I, kept reading, I kept reading the story. It gets a little gruesome. Some, things, some bad things happened to the Midianites, Israelites. We'll keep it PG. We got some primary, some creative role in here. Might not want to talk about that. <laughs> but God knew Gideon was fearful. So he sends all the fearful people away, right? And stares their fear into victory. So y'all remember Catalina, right? Catalina's story? Okay, so let's head back into it. <clears throat> so I heard the idea, right, of going night snorkeling. I was like, night, y'all remember? <laughs> night snorkeling. I was like, nah, I'm already afraid of the ocean. And you want me to go in the ocean at night? <laughs> okay, all right, I can do it, I can do it. So I hear the idea of night snorkeling, and they're like, oh, yeah, 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 snorkeling. You're, you're fully submerged in the water, too. I'm like, oh, okay, so we all up in the water. All right. I was afraid. I was doubting myself. I didn't know if I could even go through with it. So we had some activities. Um, there were many. There was lots of activities at Catalina. There was, there was the go-karting. There was the treasure hunts, the rock climbing, and then there was kayaking. Once I heard kayaking, I was like, Kayaking, okay, so we in, we in the water, we in the water now. And as we're heading to the water, we're back here, right? We got all our kayaks, our teacher, Ms. Herman, is behind us, and we're going. On, well, it's good, Sunny, I can see. I'm like, all right. And I hear Miss Herman, she, li- she lets out a big scream. She's all, ah! Try my hardest not to scream like a girl, but she screams. And I look back, and her foot is red, like red, 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 like Rudolph, the red nose render red. It's red. And I'm like, whoa, is she just trying to like make an excuse so she don't have to go? Should I do the same thing? Should I I scream? (laughs) And so the instructor comes down and he says, oh, no, 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 that's uh, that's sand stingray. I'm all, oh, so y'all just now gonna tell us there's sand stingray in the water, in the sand, sand that we better walk into, okay. So I'm I'm like, all right, Ms. Herman, she's out, I'm still here. I'm walking to the water, like, looking at everybody else go. I'm okay. I'm scared. I'm, I'm, I'm looking out for myself. We get into the water. It's fun. I can see them with all the homies. I'm like, all right, if they die, I die. So we all going to die together. <laughs> we good. And then after that, there was us in the kayak, me and my buddy Sam. Our kayak, shout out to Sam Dompas, if you ever see this. <laughs> We're in the kayak, right? Our kayak has a hole in it. Has a hole in it. And we're pushing to go left, and we're going right. I'm like, yo, Sam, there's a hole in our kayak. And he's like, yeah, I know. And we were always the furthest behind the group. And we're getting further and further away from the island, and it's not looking good. But luckily, there was a current right that kept pushing us the right way, so it was cool. It wasn't cool until we get to this one, this one area. Our instructor, he comes up and he's like, you know what we're above right now? And I'm like, what? You better not tell me we're above a volcano or something. And he says, no, 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 we're above the uh, Mariana Trench. Anyone here know what the Mariana Trench is? Some of, some of you in school know what that is, right? Okay. Instructor, he's like, yeah, we're above the Mariana Trench. You know what's down there? I'm like, what? He's like, monsters. I'm like, oh, monsters. Y'all remember Nemo? Have they seen Nemo? Nemo? Okay, you remember the uh, glowing fish with the, yeah. He's like, yeah, that's down there. I'm like, oh, okay, nice, nice, all right. Sam, we're going we to need to roll a little faster. <laughs> uh, I'm down with my abilities right here. I'm like, I feel like this is a personal attack. I'm like, is it because of the color of my skin? Think I can't swim? <laughs> Nah, but it was, it, it was scary, but thank, thank, thankfully for the current, we, we were able to stay with the group. It was fun. Night snorkeling. Finally upon us, right? Couldn't escape it. So we're heading back up to put our wetsuits on. I remember it was nighttime, and um, we're putting our wetsuits on. We're all looking ridiculous because we're a little wet, putting them on, and we start heading down to the seashore, right? We're walking down, I'm breathing, I'm having asthma attack, even though I don't have asthma. 
I'm breathing. I'm like, oh, I don't think I can do this. I pray. I'm all, Lord, I'm trying not to have a panic attack in front of my friends, in front of these girls. I'm trying to look cool. Please be with me. So we get to the water. I'm standing there. It's dark. This is the water. Instructor says, all right, guys, let's get in. Let's do it. So we're getting in. Water's cold. I'm like, oh, I feel it going up. Water's cold. We're in the water now. I can, I, can still, I can still stand. I still feel sand. And then the drop. Oh, okay. I don't feel the sand anymore. We're in the water. I'm breathing. Oh, oh. I'm all, Lord, please, please help me. We're in the water, and the instructor, he says, all right, guys. Put your heads down. I'm like, okay, okay. We put our heads down. And then we got, we have flashlights with us so we can look and see little creatures. But I wasn't sure. I'm like, do I want to see what's about to come out and kill me? Or like, do I want to, do I want to see that? No, I'm not sure. He's like, just turn the flashlights on. You're going to see some cool stuff. I'm like, okay. So I turn on my flashlight and we see the little kelp forest. We see the little Garibaldi, if y'all remember that. Garibaldi or state fish or something. It was fun. It was fun. It was fine. I was like, okay, I'm with my friends. We're having a good time. And he's like, all right, now turn it off. I'm like, you say turn off the flashlight? Did you just say turn it off? At least that's what he said, right? So I turn off my flashlight. And he says, okay, close your eyes. I'm like, nah. Nah. <laughs> he says, close your eyes. I'm like, uh, okay. If I die, might as well accept it. So I'm floating there with my eyes closed. And he says, wave your hands around. I'm like, is he just messing with me now? Like, wave your hand, okay. So I see, I see everyone else doing it because my eyes are slightly open. I'm like, all right. So I'm waving my hands around. And he says, open. Open my eyes. There's this blue glowing stuff around our hands. I'm like, whoa. This is cool. I'm not scared anymore. He explains to us what bioluminescence is. Any scientists in here know bioluminescence is? Bioluminescence, right? All right. So he says it occurs, right, through a chemical reaction that produces light energy within an organism's body. When the organism is aggravated by moving your hands around, it lights up. All my fear at that moment went away. It was gone. It was fun. So you see, right, God was putting me through all these tests. He had something he wanted me to see. If he didn't put me through all those scenarios, then maybe I would have chickened out on the very last one. But the most important thing to see, the bioluminescence. God took all fear and distractions away from Gideon, right? So we could focus on the task at hand. Most fear it comes from doubt, your ability to be able to do something. Like when Barbara comes up here, right? And she says, we need some people for church ministries. So I know, I hear some of y'all probably like, Church ministry, don't, don't they already have enough? I don't know. I don't want them to come looking for me. Maybe I'll sit in the back pew so they don't notice me. You know what I'm saying? Fear. We go through it every day. It stops us from doing a lot of things. We're afraid of our choices. We're afraid of things to come. Things we don't know. Making decisions is in your head when you're afraid, it's sometimes like a war zone. Gideon was in an actual war zone. He wasn't on a eighth grade biology trip. Satan's plan, right, is to make us feel ashamed in being a believer in Christ, carrying out his duties. But the Holy Spirit is the ultimate backseat driver. Amen? Amen. So will you let God steer your fear? Every time you're afraid, 
I want you to remember the sermon and what 2 Timothy 1.7 says. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. God took the wheel and steered Gideon's fear away. Just an ordinary guy, right? He took my fear away, steered it away, scared a little eighth grader. Will you let him steer your fear? Thank you. Yes, we're going to clean that up. Don't worry. 